Hello and welcome everyone to the first session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series of 2013. Thank you to everyone who is a return attendee and welcome to all the newcomers. I hope this year's Brown Bag sessions will prove to be even more well attended and useful to the general public. Um, I'm looking forward to another great year. As many of you probably know, my name is Carissa Smith and I am the DuraCloud Partner Specialist. And I primarily work on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace not-for-profit organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that, as you probably already uh, noticed, your audio for today's call is disabled. But I highly encourage participation through the chat feature which is located in the bottom right of your screen. Simply insert your question or comment and hit the little conversation bubble and it will send to the group. Um, as many of you probably are familiar, if you are a return attendee to this brown bag session, um, my demonstrations and uh, discussions are very informal. I try to leave as much time as I can at the end for comments and questions uh, for the group. So I have a little presentation scheduled for today, and then I will be sure to address all questions at the end. Feel free to insert your questions uh, into the chat feature as I go along, or uh, hold them at the end. Um, it doesn't really make any difference. I will address all of them as they come in. With that, I'd like to get our brown bag session today started. Um, today, as the screen notes in front of you, I will be discussing the DuraCloud subscription plans, specifically the preservation and enterprise options. Um, I'll also talk about the ways that these uh, various subscription plans differ, both in terms of features as well as the uh, pricing for those plans. And I'll also talk about the use cases that each of the subscription options is really uh, tailored or best suited to meet. So with that, I will get out of this presentation slide, minimize this for a moment. Let me make sure, okay, no questions in the chat, and I am making sure I am unmuted. <laughs> so today, um, again, as I noted, I'll be talking about the Dur DuraCloud subscription plans, and I'm going to start at the DuraCloud.org pricing page, which is located at DuraCloud.org slash pricing. So you can follow along if you'd like. <clears throat> Um, there are really two tiers of, uh, of DuraCloud pricing, and then we break out those tiers into two uh, kind of sub-subscriptions. There's the DuraCloud Preservation subscription plans, and there's the DuraCloud Enterprise subscription plans. And then within each of those two tiers are uh, two kind of um, subcategories of both. So on the preservation side, there is the basic and the plus plan. And on the enterprise, there is the standard and the premium plan. And the reason why we break out uh, both of our preservation and enterprise plans this way is uh, to detail the difference between the number of cloud uh, storage providers that each plan is integrated with, as well as the number of redundant copies that are stored. So that's really the main difference between uh, a basic and a plus subscription on the preservation side and the standard and premium on the enterprise plan. The DuraCloud preservation basic plan here in the center of your screen and the DuraCloud enterprise standard plan, um, both are similar in that they are only integrated with Amazon's uh, cloud storage. So in other words, uh, your DuraCloud account comes integrated with uh, Amazon um, as a standard storage provider. Through the DuraCloud web interface, you have access to that content, and DuraCloud stores one copy at Amazon on your behalf. Um, the indication of two redundant copies in both of these columns uh, is essentially us, us, the DuraCloud service, passing on Amazon's promise that they're keeping an additional redundant copy or two or three. Um, they don't put it in writing. They just verbalize that they keep redundant copies in their own infrastructure. But through the DuraCloud interface, you have access to your one copy stored at Amazon. And then um, on both the preservation enterprise plan levels, the next step up uh, the ladder or up the tier um, is the preservation plus plan and then the enterprise premium plan. And again, um, the difference really in these two plans lies in the number of cloud providers your account is integrated with. So again, the Preservation Plus and Enterprise Premium plans 
come integrated you know, with not only Amazon, but the DuraCloud service also keeps a replica copy of your content and stores it at the San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Storage Center. And you can see that listed here uh, in the third or fourth uh, row in this table. And again, through the DuraCloud web interface, you have access to both of uh, those copies, your one stored at Amazon and your second copy stored at SDSC. The DuraCloud service keeps the two copies uh, synchronized in the cloud. That is one of the services that comes um, <clears throat> out of the box with the Preservation Plus and Enterprise Premium plan. And of course, SDSC also makes uh, the same sorts of promises that Amazon does. In other words, it keeps multiple redundant copies in its own infrastructure, uh, hence the reason why we can guarantee that there are four redundant copies. Um, but again, as a DuraCloud customer, you see uh, the, first, the first redundant copy uh, at each of the storage providers. So the number of copies that you see in the DuraCloud interface is equal to the number of cloud storage providers your account is integrated with. So in the case of the DuraCloud Preservation Plus and Enterprise Premium plans, you see two copies of your content as it's stored in the cloud. And this will probably make much more sense here in, in just a few minutes when I jump into the actual DuraCloud web application. I'll show you what that, what that means from a practical perspective in the application itself. So again, I just wanted to point out um, the difference in the Preservation Basic Plus and the Standard Premium, why we break those two, uh, those two plans into uh, two different categories. It's really in the number of storage providers that your account, your DuraCloud account, is integrated with off the bat. So, of course, I, I skipped over probably one of the most important features that folks on, on the line today are interested in, and that's the DuraCloud subscription pricing. And I will note that Amazon lowered its pricing at the end of last year, so we, the DuraCloud team, announced uh, new reduced, significantly reduced storage pricing for our subscription plans in January. Uh, so just a, a little over a month ago. Um, I'm just going to walk through, I'll verbalize the pricing, it's listed here on the site and then I can take questions uh, as well if there are any questions at the end uh, today. So the DuraCloud Preservation Basic Plan starts at $1,500 a year for your first terabyte that you decide to store and then it's $1,000 a year for the additional terabytes that you wish to store. And again these are per year annual uh, prices. The Preservation Plus plan starts at $2,500 a year for your first terabyte and uh, costs $1,700 a year for additional terabytes. The DuraCloud Enterprise Standard package starts at $5,900 a year for your first terabyte and then again is $1,000 for any uh, subsequent terabytes you wish to store. And the premium is just a $1,000 jump up at $6,900 a year for the first terabyte and uh, $1,700 a year for additional terabytes. One thing I'll note, and we quote this down at the bottom, is that these prices are true for 10 terabytes. If you wish to store over 10 terabytes in DuraCloud, we do have special pricing available. So we would request that you uh, contact us directly and we'll create a custom quote if you wish to store uh, over 10 terabytes. And it is a cost reduction um, if you decide to, to uh, store more than 10 terabytes in DuraCloud. Uh, the price does go down, not up, as, as some services do. I'm going to move down the features list here again, just verbalize some of the features and the differences between the plans, and then I will um, give a visual demonstration of the differences between the subscription plans um, in the DuraCloud interface itself. But the first uh, feature, after the ones I've just covered, is this online backup which is a feature that is available at, uh, comes out of the box, if you will. I have my, my fingers doing the quote sign. Um, with each DuraCloud subscription plan, uh, DuraCloud is a web application, so you can back up your content through this online uh, web application at any point in time. And then probably uh, related to that, the web-based administrative uh, dashboard feature that we list uh, as a feature of all of the plans um, again, uh, is inherent in the fact that DuraCloud is a web application. You can log in directly to your DuraCloud account. You have access to every single individual piece of content that you have decided to store in the cloud. And then you have um, various administrative uh, actions or activities that you can take on that content 
uh, through the DuraCloud web interface. Um, so you do get content item level specific uh, administrative features and capabilities within the DuraCloud web interface. The next feature that's listed here that comes out of the box with every single DuraCloud subscription plan and level is the automated uh, content health checks and reports. And I wanted to pause here for a moment and really stress um, how this is a differentiating feature of the DuraCloud service in particular. So the DuraCloud service uh, at all of the subscription plan levels runs an automated semi-frequent content health check. And what happens uh, when the service runs is it will check each individual piece of content that you have decided to store in DuraCloud and recalculate uh, an MD5 checksum value and compare it to the originally stored MD5 checksum for that content item. And then it will generate a report that is available through the DuraCloud web interface. It will give you the date that that health check was run as well as a status for each of those individual content items, meaning that the content item is healthy or whether the DuraCloud service has uh, reported some sort of bit integrity issue it has detected. So again, this is a really, um, a really fully featured um, service that the DuraCloud uh, web application provides to you, and it, it is um, it does run at all of the subscription plan levels. It's something that just automatically runs out of the box with DuraCloud. And I will show you what those reports look like uh, in the web interface in just one moment. But it's something that does differentiate DuraCloud from uh, an Amazon, for instance. Although Amazon does um, verbalize and market that they run health checks for your content, of course, they do not give you direct access to uh, content health reports or integrity reports. So uh, DuraCloud makes that very transparent. <coughs> Moving down the list again, dynamic, dynamic storage reports are available through the DuraCloud web, web interface at all of the plan levels as well. And as the, the feature, the name of the feature really implies, um, you get to see the amount of content you're currently storing in DuraCloud. There are graphs of the history of the content you've added over time. There are pie charts that break out the storage you're using based on MIME type, based on um, uh, DuraCloud space, which will make more sense in just a moment, um, but there are a, a lot of uh, pieces of information that are provided to you in terms of the storage you're using in your DuraCloud account, uh, all available through the DuraCloud web interface. And again, all of the, fe the features that I'm going over right now are available at all of the subscription plan levels. <clears throat> The next feature on the list, online sharing, um, again is a feature at all the plan levels. Because DuraCloud is a web application and all of your content is stored in a web application, you can certainly choose to share those individual content items um, either with other folks who you want to give a DuraCloud login to, or you do have the ability um, to open up access to individual content items within the DuraCloud web interface uh, as well and I will show you how to do that once we get into the actual uh, demonstration piece of today's session. But you do have the ability to share your content simply uh, because DuraCloud is a web application. You can uh, give access to content that's stored in your DuraCloud account if you wish to do so. Or not, if you, if you decide that you want to have essentially a, a dark archive, you can do that as well and it can be certainly closed to only the individuals that you would like to give access uh, to your content. The next feature is um, something that is limited to the Preservation Plus and the Enterprise Premium plans, and that's because it is reliant on the fact that DuraCloud has two copies of your content. So I mentioned when DuraCloud is storing uh, content at both Amazon and SDSC, it will automatically synchronize those copies on your behalf. So anytime that you add content to your DuraCloud account, the DuraCloud service will automatically synchronize that content to Amazon and SDSC on your behalf. Um, you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to do any manual uh, multi-copying or anything like that. DuraCloud does it on your behalf. And as, as you continue to use your DuraCloud account as months and years go by, as you add content to your DuraCloud account, it will continue to synchronize um, your cloud copies at both Amazon and SDSC. And then the added benefit of having two copies 
um, both stored and managed by DuraCloud is the is the uh, feature that DuraCloud will provide file recovery across those uh, cloud data centers or cloud storage providers. So for instance, uh, an example of this would be if uh, the health, the DuraCloud health uh, check service um, notices a corrupt file in your Amazon storage provider area. Um, the DuraCloud service itself will go then go and check that same file that has been stored at SDSC uh, ensure that it is a healthy copy, and then it can recover um, the healthy copy from the SDSC storage area uh, and replace it uh, in the Amazon area. So you do have that ability to um, recover files across storage providers as well with the DuraCloud. Um, <clears throat> and again, this is something that will be much more visually obvious once I get into the DuraCloud interface itself. You do have access, direct access, to both of those copies. Uh, to perform file recovery uh, as well. <clears throat> All right, I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking today, and I apologize. I will get to the demo. Let me run through the next list of features, which should uh, not take too terribly long. Um, so the next feature on the list is coming soon, and coming soon means within the next uh, two months. We are working on a shibboleth integration with DuraCloud, and this will be available at all of the plan levels. If you use Shibboleth uh, authentication at your local institution, you will be able to use uh, Shibboleth to authenticate to your DuraCloud account. And again, this will be uh, coming within the next month or two. Um, I don't foresee it being um, anywhere over the two months. So we should have the Shibboleth integration available to all customers uh, within two months. The next service on the list, the media serving uh, feature or service, is standard out of the box available with the enterprise plans and it is an optional feature that you specifically have to request if you are a preservation plan customer. The preservation plans have really been tailored to folks who have a, a pure preservation, cloud preservation or cloud backup um, use case and uh, in the past with our, our current set of customers and users um, there hasn't been much need to um, enable media serving over content that folks are primarily just wanting to preserve uh, in the cloud. It's certainly a service that we can turn on, we being the DuraCloud administrators, uh, on your behalf if you are a customer at the preservation level, um, but uh, it's something that you, again, would have to specifically request. <clears throat> if you're a customer of the enterprise plan, um, as you will see in just a moment, you have the ability to administer that service. You can turn it on and turn it off um, and really determine uh, how you wish to run that service uh, at the enterprise plan level. The next couple features are um, really what sets the enterprise plans apart from the preservation plans. Um, and that's the ability to create sub-accounts within your main DuraCloud account and then provide additional management as well as access uh, controls and permissions uh, based access uh, to those sub-accounts um, at the enterprise subscription plan level. So this is both for the enterprise standard and premium plans. You essentially have the ability to share your DuraCloud account with various other uh, research groups or departments or even collaborating uh, other institutions that your uh, organization works with. Um, again, you can essentially create uh, sub-accounts within your main DuraCloud account and share access uh, to your DuraCloud account. And this is a capability that's not available at the preservation plan levels. Um, there are very strict limits in terms of uh, access uh, at the preservation plan level where the enterprise plans are really geared towards organizations um, that want a, an organization-wide DuraCloud account that they can administer and uh, provide additional um, user-based permission and access control uh, for. And again, <laughs> it's a lot of verbiage and a lot of words coming out of my mouth, but it'll make more sense once I log into the enterprise plan. I'll show you how you can uh, create those sub-accounts. Uh, quite easily. And then the last uh, the last feature down here listed is the number of users. And these are DuraCloud users who can log into your account. 
again, at the preservation level, um, based on past um, discussions with customers and really how we've um, tailored the preservation subscription plans, we limit the number of users to two, um, as we found that uh, most institutions who have a preservation uh, use case in the cloud there's really only a, a one, two, maybe three or four individuals who are responsible for preserving the content. So we didn't find that there was really any need for multiple users um, to have accounts to DuraCloud. However, of course, on the enterprise plan uh, subscription level, because it is a, an organization-wide account or has been used that way, um, you do have the ability to create an, an unlimited number uh, of users within DuraCloud and, and give them either very, very open administrative control of your DuraCloud account or very limited uh, user-only um, access to your DuraCloud account. Essentially, there's a spectrum of permissions uh, that you can enable at an account level that's available at the enterprise plan level. Okay, so that was a quick walkthrough of the features and the differences between the plans. I'm going to uh, navigate to a DuraCloud account and show you um, the visual difference between the preservation and enterprise plans. Uh, for the purposes of today's uh, trial, I'm going to use the demonstration DuraCloud account, which is located at demo.duracloud.org, uh, as you might expect. As a customer of DuraCloud, at any of the plan levels, you have the ability to configure that URL to be the uh, institution named at duracloud.org or the um, research project named at duracloud.org, you have the ability to configure uh, that URL when you set up your account. I'm going to pause a moment and attempt to log in here and type type and talk at the same time, which is sometimes a, <laughs> a problem for me. All right. <clears throat> so uh, the account that I just logged into is a sample preservation plan. <clears throat> You'll see, um, let me orient you to the screen for those of you who have not seen DuraCloud. In the top left hand side of your screen, of course, you'll see lovely DuraCloud branding with lots of clouds. Um, but probably more importantly underneath that, you'll see a logo that is a visual indicator uh, of the storage, cloud storage provider that your account is integrated with. So right now you can see, hopefully, the Amazon Web Services logo. And that tells you that the content that you're about to view in the interface below is currently being stored at Amazon. And this is Amazon's S3, their simple storage uh, service. Below that is the Spaces column. And Spaces is a DuraCloud term for a content container or content bucket. Um, we really, each storage provider has a different name, so we just added another one to the mix. So these are Spaces. If you click on a space, uh, the interface will come to life, and I'll walk through that in just a moment. One thing I will note, uh, at the preservation plan level, you only have access to two spaces. At the enterprise plan level, you will have the ability to create uh, unlimited number of spaces, and as well as uh, add additional spaces, delete spaces, etc. You have more administrative control. At the preservation plan level, um, you have two spaces that you have access to. So again, that's a, a differentiation between the preservation and enterprise plans. When I click on a space, you'll see uh, in the center of your screen the content items that are held within that, held or stored within that space. And then on the right-hand side, you'll always see the detail for whatever it is you've selected, whether it's a space or a content item. Uh, in a moment, I'll show you the enterprise plan, but I do want to underscore right now that the interface itself is exactly the same, looks looks and feels the same, at, regardless of what um, subscription plan you've signed up for. Um, the real difference in the interface is just your ability to administer your account. Um, there are a lot more administrative controls available in the enterprise account, and there are a lot fewer administrative controls at the preservation plan level. So again, uh, this is a preservation plan. You have two spaces over here on the left. Your content items are in the center panel. And then uh, the detail panel is always here on the right-hand side of your screen. In the space detail area, um, uh, one thing I want to point out, I won't walk through all of the details. That's a brown bag for another day. Um, but I specifically want to point out this last health check um, feature. 
And again, this is the, the health check service that I indicated that runs over uh, all of the subscription plans. You can see that the content uh, in this Carissa folder test space last had its health checked on Saturday, February 9th. And it was a successful check, meaning all 10 content items are healthy uh, as they've been stored in Amazon. And I can pull up the complete report by clicking on the link at the end of this green uh, status bar. So again, this is something that is consistent uh, within every single Dura Cloud account, regardless of what subscription plan you've signed up for. Um, a couple other things I wanted to note uh, in the interface itself um, that are true across the board for every single DuraCloud account, regardless of your subscription plan, uh, is this Add Items button. You do have the ability to upload content through this DuraCloud web interface by clicking on the Add Items button. And then there are two other ways you can add content to DuraCloud. Um, the second way is through the DuraCloud synchronization utility which is a tool that you would download and run either on your local machine or local networked server uh, that would upload content to your DuraCloud account. Again, it doesn't matter what subscription plan you've, you've signed up for, the synchronization tool will work for all of those plans. And then the third way is through the DuraCloud REST APIs. You can uh, create programmatic integrations or your own, uh, develop your own programs that will interact with DuraCloud as well. And again, um, those three ways to add content through this web interface, through the synchronization utility, and through the REST API are all available um, at all of the subscription plan levels. The major difference between the DuraCloud Preservation Basic and the DuraCloud Preservation Plus plan is this uh, drop-down bar over here on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you are a um, subscriber to the Preservation Basic Plan, you will only have access to this interface. You will only see the Amazon Web Services logo. If you've signed up for the DuraCloud Preservation Plus, you will have um, access to this provider pull-down window, and you will have the ability to navigate to the SDSC storage area, which I just did by hovering over the provider box and clicking on SDSC. The interface itself looks almost exactly the same. You'll notice that over here on the left-hand side of your screen, the um, logo now changes to SDSC, indicating that you're now in the San Diego supercomputer storage area. And then if I click on a folder, again, the interface is exactly the same. It's the same 10 content items that were stored in Amazon. The DuraCloud service has synchronized them over to uh, this SDSC storage area. You can see the health check over here on the right. Um, again, look and feel is exactly the same. The features and functionality are the same. We're just in the San Diego supercomputer cloud um, storage area now. And I can navigate back to Amazon by choosing it from the provider pull down. And that is the main difference uh, between the Preservation Basic and Preservation Plus plans. Logging out of this account for a moment and opening up an enterprise plan because I want to make sure I leave enough time at the end for questions. I'm going to log into an enterprise plan here for a moment. As you can see, um, the interface is remarkably the same. There are some differences. One of the main differences you'll see is in uh, a very long list of spaces over here on the left and the ability to add a space if you wish. And again, this really gets to the fact that you can administer uh, your enterprise account um, a, a lot more. Uh, what, let's see, how do I want to how do I want to say this? You have a lot more administrative control over uh, an enterprise plan than you do uh, at the preservation plan level. If I click on a space, <clears throat> again, the interface itself is is relatively similar. Your content items are listed here in the center of the screen. Your details are here on the right as they were before. Um, again, one of the major differences with the uh, enterprise plan, you have the ability to delete it in space entirely. You can open up a space for public access, which means that each of these content items and their associated storage URLs would then be open to the public. In other words, you could embed them in your own web applications if you wish and use DuraCloud as a, as a server, a content server. Um, by default, all content is dark, meaning that a user has to have a DuraCloud login to access this content. Um, but you can open up access to your content at a space level. 
And then one of the biggest differences um, between the preservation and enterprise plans is this permissions area. So this is where you would create uh, the ability for both users and groups to have access to content at a space level. And this is what we mean by a sub-account within DuraCloud. So each of these spaces within DuraCloud be can become a sub-account. And you can open up or restrict permissions and access to the content that's held within that space. So what do I mean by that exactly? So you can see that this Carissa Images space um, has a user that has read and write access to this space. However, there are no other permissions um, on this space. So any other user uh, who logs into this DuraCloud account cannot see this Carissa Images space. So if I had another user named, I don't know, Bob Jones, and Bob Jones logged into this DuraCloud account, since he does not have read nor does he have write access to the space, he would not see this Carissa Images space. Only the user T. Donnie who has access to uh, this DuraCloud space. You can certainly edit or add additional permissions. So if I clicked Add, you can see that there are additional groups of users. There's a demo group, there's a test group that I can um, add both read and write permissions to, as well as a couple different users. There's a JJ Markow and a C test user that I can give access uh, to this particular space. So again, there are lots, uh, a lot of different permissions controls that you have access to at the enterprise plan level um, that are not available at the preservation plan uh, subscription uh, plan levels. Below that, um, again, I'll just point out that the last health check um, is also available at the enterprise plan level, of course. As I mentioned, it's something that comes out of the box. Um, <clears throat> the difference between the enterprise standard and premium, again, is the number of providers that you have your account integrated with. The enterprise standard plan, again, is only integrated with Amazon, but the um, <clears throat> enterprise premium plan also has SDSC integrated. Uh, again, the difference, the same difference between the preservation basic and plus, it's just the number of providers your account is integrated with. And then the last difference with the enterprise plan that I wanted to discuss with everyone today is the, the um, access to the services tab. So I mentioned uh, the media streaming service, which you can see is currently running on this enterprise account. And you do, uh, as a subscriber to the enterprise plan, you have the ability to um, deploy this service um, or undeploy it, reconfigure it, etc. You do, have, again, have a much more fully featured administrative control um, in this available services button. You all will also have the ability at the enterprise plan level to run um, ad hoc health checks of your content. So of course, DuraCloud has not the automated health checking service running in the background at all times. But if you as an administrator want to check a particular subset of your DuraCloud uh, account's health at any point in time, you can run an additional health check to verify uh, the health of your content as well. And then as an administrator, you can also see this duplicate on change service running. And that is uh, the synchronization service that's keeping your content in Amazon and the SDSC storage areas uh, duplicated and in sync in an ongoing basis. So you can see that that is also running um, on this account. And that is, again, um, an administrative control that you have access to when you are a subscriber to the enterprise plan. So with that, that was a lot of talking. And I apologize. Um, there are a lot of differences in terms of features and pricing and, and um, capabilities within these various DuraCloud subscription plans. And I saw a lot of questions come through the chat. So I'm going to start make sure I have enough time to address all of those questions. So the first question from uh, Dana, and I apologize if I pronounce anybody's name incorrectly. Are there any plans to offer smaller size subscriptions? This is a hard sell for our institution because we don't have much digital content at this time. That's a great question, Dana. And right now, the, the smallest amount of content that, that we offer in a subscription plan is one terabyte, um, and that's the DuraCloud. Well, you can, you can sign up for any of the plans at the one terabyte level. Um, but the preservation basic plan at one terabyte is $1,500. And that is really the, the smallest 
plan that we have available right now in terms of um, the amount of content that you're storing. Um, I'd be curious though to hear what would be of interest to you at your uh, institution, what various sized plans, is it 250 gig, is it 500 gig, 750 gig, or is it even smaller than 250 gig? Um, uh, that would be uh, an interesting data point from, from my perspective. Uh, Monica asks, what is, the f what is the frequency of health check reports? Uh, yes, thank you for calling me out. I was saying semi-frequent. Um, it's something that we haven't set a policy or a standard on. Uh, the DuraCloud team has not. Right now, it is the DuraCloud service is set programmatically to check each uh, DuraCloud account. Um, I believe it's every three months at this point. So it, you get a health check uh, quarterly within your DuraCloud account. Um, but that's something we're still talking about internally, whether that is too frequently, whether um, biannually makes more sense. Um, that's something that we can very easily change uh, programmatically. But right now it is set for quarterly, quarterly health checks of your content as, it, as they're stored in the cloud. Uh, Andrea asks if we've seen cases of corruption where you had to replace the file with a copy stored in the other storage provider. <laughs> That's a, another great question, Andrea. And knock on wood, I always say this, <laughs> knock on wood, throw salt over my shoulder. Um, we have not seen any cases where there has been a file corruption that is due to you know, Amazon corrupting a file or SDSC um, corrupting a file. And that's been in the three plus years that we've had DuraCloud in both beta as well as production. Um, we haven't come upon or come across um, a, an integrity issue that was due to the storage provider corrupting a file. Um, but again, that's not to say that that can happen and we're not, we're certainly uh, not banking on that to always be the case. But at this point in time, we have not uh, experienced that. Okay, moving on, lots of questions. Thank you everyone, keep the questions coming and I will do my best to get through all of them. Carol asks, if you had a terabyte of content in the system, how often would each content item be health checked? Can health checks be run on demand if you wanted to check a certain space or certain file? So I think I got to the, the first question that right now DuraCloud has it programmatically set to uh, check the health of your content on a quarterly basis. Um, but again, we're still discussing internally what our policy will be, um, whether that makes sense going forward or if biannual or annual or monthly makes sense. Um, but right now it is uh, quarterly. And then uh, Carol asks if health checks can be run on demand. So at the enterprise plan level, yes, they can be run on demand. And yes, you can check certain spaces. Um, the the uh, DuraCloud health checking service, which I didn't demonstrate, um, that is available at the enterprise plan level can be set at a space level. So the Carissa Images uh, space I could uh, run a health check for. Um, it, we don't, you can't run it on a certain file, um, but it will check the individual files within a space. Um, Gail asks, um, my pull down for enterprise shows rack space. Is this an option too? Oh, Gail, you're good. Um, my demonstration account is configured with all of the <laughs> DuraCloud storage or all of the cloud storage providers that DuraCloud is integrated with, whether it's beta or production level, um, because I do use that account for testing as well. DuraCloud is configured to run with Rackspace, and it, it is an option uh, for folks if you'd like to sign up. We don't advertise Rackspace because it is substantially more expensive. SDSC um, is about uh, $700 uh, a terabyte annually, um, where Rackspace, I think, still, their pricing is still even higher than Amazon. Um, if you have a use case where you would like to use DuraCloud, and configure it with Rackspace, we can certainly do that, um, but it is relatively costly still at this point. Rackspace's um, storage pricing has not has not come down quite as much as, as Amazon has and is certainly uh, not anywhere near the San Diego supercomputer uh, pricing um, for storing content in the cloud. Uh, Dana said that 250 gigabytes would probably be more attractive, but I think paying per gigabyte like Amazon does, does um, might be most attractive. 
Okay, that, great. Thank you for that feedback, Dana. We had heard from previous DuraCloud customers that um, paying per gigabyte uh, as on a pass-through basis was something that was very hard to provision uh, at a local institution, that an annual uh, contract at a certain um, storage level uh, is much more easy to not only invoice and procure, but uh, just to process at institutions. So um, thank you for that bit of feedback. Uh, Beth, Beth asks, are there any implications, technical or cost, for pulling content out if we move to a different service? Um, Great question. Let me answer the cost perspective first. So built within the DuraCloud subscription plans uh, is the assumption of uh, file recovery or disaster recovery, meaning that you could pull your content out and download it, all of it, the entire corpus, uh, at any point in time. You can certainly move to a different service. You're not locked into to DuraCloud uh, over and above your, your annual subscription. Um, from a technical perspective, DuraCloud stores your content agnostically. So whatever content you put into DuraCloud is what you would get or retrieve or download out of DuraCloud. So um, you're not locked into a, a particular file format or some sort of content bundle. Um, whatever you put into DuraCloud is what, what you will retrieve. So from a technical perspective, um, you wouldn't be locked into DuraCloud either. Um, the only thing I will say is that if you're storing multiple terabytes in DuraCloud, um, there are limitations in terms of how quickly you can download your content from the cloud because you are leveraging your local internet connection or whatever bandwidth uh, your, um, your computer uh, has been provided. So if you wanted to retrieve three terabytes in, in two minutes, it's not probably feasible. Um, but you can certainly pull your content out of DuraCloud um, at any point in time. Just keep in mind that it is dependent on your internet connection or your the bandwidth that has been provisioned for your machine. And if there was uh, a particular disaster recovery scenario where you needed to have your content back um, more quickly, you could certainly work with the DuraCloud team and we would help you get your content out as quickly as we could. But you're certainly not locked in. That's actually one of the one of the tenets of DuraCloud and the DuraSpace not-for-profit organization is, is um, helping organizations, specifically in the academic uh, community, not be locked into a particular technology or a storage vendor. And DuraCloud does its best to, uh, to differentiate itself that way. Uh, Monica asks if only enterprise plan holders can run ad hoc health checks. Yes, that is correct, Monica. Only, um, only enterprise uh, subscribers have access to that additional services tab. And then uh, the preservation plans um, have the automated health check available to them, um, but they do not have the ability to administer additional health checks. Uh, Gail asks if we leverage the AWS import expert, import expert on USB or disk for pulling in content. Um, we do not currently. Uh, we have not had a need from our customers uh, for that sort of service. We found that it is much more um, technically efficient as well as cost efficient to do it over the wire, import and export content into and out of DuraCloud over the wire. Um, that's not to say that we couldn't explore that with a particular customer, um, but we haven't had any need for that. And the one time I think we trialed it um, in comparison to uh, importing content uh, to DuraCloud through the wire, through um, an internet connection, it was much more um, efficient and cost effective as well. Does SDSC offer a similar service? <sighs> that is a good question, and I don't have an answer for that one, Val or Gail. Val. Um, I, I believe they do, but I wouldn't swear to it, and it's something, again, that we haven't had to um, we haven't had to explore. The DuraCloud uh, synchronization service between Amazon and SDSC has always just pushed the content uh, over, oh, over the internet from Amazon to SDSC or from DuraCloud to SDSC, so it hasn't been, hasn't been an issue that we've had to explore. Other questions? We are coming right up to time for today's brown bag, but I'm happy uh, to continue to answer questions as if folks have the ability to stay on the line. 
Uh, the AWS that we tested with hard drives, how much content was that with? Oh, now you're really testing my memory, Carol. Um, that was, I think, three years ago. And I, it was definitely over 10 terabytes. I'm not quite sure how much content it was, to be honest. Um, but I definitely know it was I, definitely over 10 or 15 terabytes, I believe. But again, something I wouldn't necessarily swear to because my memory is not serving me uh, today. Other questions that I can answer for folks um, and in, in the interim, I will note, let me bring up my presentation here, <clears throat> that I do encourage folks, if you are interested, to sign up for a DuraCloud trial account. Um, you do get a free DuraCloud production level account for 60 days. And then my next brown bag will be on Wednesday, March 27th with a topic TBA. So um, I encourage everybody to continue to uh, participate in these sessions. All of these questions are great. I see Paul just um, submitted one. So Amazon is always a primary storage. And if it is a plan that supports multiple data centers, SDSC or Rackspace would always be the secondary. Currently, yes, that is the case. That is how DuraCloud is set up, Paul, because Amazon, we're also running DuraCloud, the actual web application on Amazon. So we keep the primary storage next to the primary compute. Um, we are um, exploring running DuraCloud within the SDSC uh, compute infrastructure, which would allow us to have primary storage at SDSC. Um, but the, the practical and real world scenario is that Amazon right now is the most fully featured uh, compute provider, cloud compute provider. And it just makes sense to keep your primary cloud storage right next to where your primary compute is uh, at the moment. But it is something that DuraCloud uh, and the DuraCloud team keep on the roadmap and on our horizon is looking at other uh, compute providers that would then allow us to support additional um, or other primary cloud storage providers. Um, but right now, Amazon is our primary storage provider with SDSC Rackspace and, and um, coming soon, Amazon Glacier uh, as a secondary um, cloud storage provider. Other questions I can answer for everyone. Um, again, I appreciate everybody sticking it out the extra couple, extra couple minutes today. Um, as I mentioned, March 27th will be my next brown bag with the topic TBA. If you have any suggestions for um, a topic or a guest speaker that you would like to see talk about the cloud or a cloud-related topic, um, feel free to email them to me, csmith at duraspace.org. I do post, as soon as I know, topics and dates uh, on the duracloud.org brown bag page, which the link is on the slide in front of you.